I'd like to introduce my co-host, my producer extraordinaire and uh, all-around podcasting expert, Charlene Goto, who is also the head of GoTo Productions, which helps to produce, which helps to, which produces uh, text, prose, and rock and roll, the only podcast of its kind that uh, talks to artists about their memoirs, BAM bios, and rock docs, too, because what's rock and roll if you don't break the rules? Here we are. Uh, Rain or shine, we're doing it. (laughs) We are. Uh, Text, prose, and rock and roll, if you didn't know, is the podcast. So with that, today's subject is the best music books of 2020. There's a little bit of creativity in here. I didn't put in any documentaries. Maybe next time we'll do that. But I did do the top uh, rock docs of 2020 in a previous post. I hope you got to check it out. Um, Charlene, uh, why don't you start us out with at least one? And okay, so what we did, well, so when we were talking about this at first, we were like, okay, we're going to make this like a Thanksgiving special, you know, Black Friday or, you know, uh, shopping, Christmas shopping, whatever. Cyber and we Monday. started going, going anything like, you know, gifts related to music. And then mm-hmm. so I, I was like thinking about books that I wanted to buy or books that I wanted to or that I would gift to some people. And some of the things I was just like, oh, well, these are things we've either talked about on the show or stuff I've heard about but I don't actually own. So I was like, these are probably, so I'm probably going to be giving away things that I don't have that <laughs> I want to have. Okay. But right. uh, the, the first thing that popped popped into my head was, um, I don't know if this came out this year or last year, but it's, uh, have you seen the, uh, the Beastie Boys box set? It's like a, oh, you it's, tell. it's a Beastie Boys, like almost like a picture book with a, a, uh, uh, like a coffee table book with like a anthology and all of that ah. stuff. It's like 150 bucks though, but it's wow. like this whole history of the Beastie Boys. And I think that's what, I don't know if you've heard that they did a documentary about the Beastie Boys on Apple TV or on Apple yes. TV plus. Yeah. yeah. And I think it, it was based off of that is this, it, it's like it, they kind of go hand in hand. As soon as you have this and you read through this, and then you go through that, it just kind of mirrors what you go through when you watch that documentary. Right. Well, you know, I, I did watch the doc, and I, we did put that on our list of best docs of 2020. We did. Right. Which is great. But I did not know that it had a corresponding book. So good to know. Thank you Man. for the for the Beastie Boy lover on your list. 150, you said? I think it was 150 for the, the, the more expensive one. There might have been, a, a like, a lower version of just photos and and uh or just the book and not like this whole you know big artwork collaboration thing that's yeah. a little bit less than that but uh, Holy cow. Okay. but uh yeah if if you're like a beastie boys I, I have a few of those in my life uh that they were just like oh i got it the minute it came out <laughs> yeah holy cow that is that's a lot there was a lot that came out this year and we certainly i said this in the in the tease and i'll say it again this is not a definitive list this is a list of things that you will not be wasting your money on if you purchase any of these. We're not critics. I'm not a critic. You're never going to hear me say anything terribly bad about an artist or about uh, their work or a book associated with that. I simply won't talk about it. So, um, And just because I don't talk about it doesn't mean it's not great either. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just a lot of things are going to escape us. But I need to leave that disclaimer in there. Uh, with that being said, there's so many great books out there that I've either perused or already read myself. I'm going to name a whole bunch of these. Some of these I have not read at all, but they're very well received. People I know who are big readers have read them, and, and I'm going to stand behind all of these. But this year we had things from Flea, Rob Halford, Chris Franz from Talking Heads, uh, Mark Lanigan of both uh, Screaming Trees and Queens of the Stone Age for a minute, uh, Dave Mustaine, Kathy Valentine, who came on our show, Tori Amos put out a book this year, Lenny Kravitz just a couple of weeks ago put something out, Jeff Tweedy, so it's not just rock, it's also lots and lots of country stuff. Uh, Frampton put out a book recently, Halsey, I think like uh, this weekend, I believe, Halsey is putting out her book of lyrics. It's not her autobiography. She's quite young. She's got a, mm. a hell of a long ride ahead of herself. Um, Bad Religion, uh, who we had on the show as well, Cliff Richard for Baby Boomers in the Neighborhood, and um, Mariah Carey. Those are just 
autobiographies this year. There's also tons of how to break into the music industry. There's a lot of band biographies, which we will also be talking about in the book, in this pod, including a really great one that I have yet to read, but everyone is saying it is my next read. And that is, I don't know if I'm going to say the nasty word here, but there is a book called Total Effin' Godhead. And you can put in the blank there, but it's about Chris Cornell. And it came out oh, wow. last year. So it, it dives deep into his very dramatic, tragic story. And uh, if you are a big Radiohead fan, and Radiohead fans are like deadheads, right? Yeah. Only in that. <laughs> Hardcore. Love them, right? Big time. Like follow them around, right? And uh, the album Kid A was a groundbreaking album for so many people swept to the Grammys. And there's a book by Stephen Hyden called This Isn't Happening, which everyone is saying it is like the new classic that talks about how analog got flipped on his head and got it came into the digital world. Hmm. And Radiohead is right that that keystone. They may not be the only one who did that, of course, but they definitely uh, were some glue between the old school and the new school. So if you like Radiohead whatsoever, that's definitely one to put on the list. Um, here's some really fun ones that are different, that are fun stocking stuffers. There is a cookbook called The Dark Side of the Spoon. And <laughs> it's, it's a cookbook um, to play music to. And it's, it's really cute. It's by uh, Joe Innes and Ralph Miller. And Peter Stoughton, and it's illustrated. It's only fourteen bucks, so it's an easy little uh, uh, stocking stuffer for people. Another really fun one that's out there is called uh, "Great Pop Things," which is a comic book, and that one is by Colin Martin. And again, it's lots of comic strips having to do with music. So if you're a big music lover and you love graphic novels or what have you, it's not a graphic novel. It's a bunch of strips, but it's interesting stuff. And then the other kids classic that I want to mention is um, there are a lot of board books out there for, for, for parents who want to uh, do more than just like good night, good night construction sign. <laughs> Actually, there's this, this is even written down, but we got for our son, there's um there's Good Night Moon. There mm. is one called Good Night iPad. And it's all, it's kind of like it mentions Eminem and all these other bands as well, which are nice. so cute. So there's a lot of like niche, cool, young parent uh, music related board books available for really little children, which are really funny and get a good gag too. I also want to mention this classic. I teased that there is one that if you buy it, if you get your hands on it, um, don't take my word. I mean, don't don't quote me on this, okay? But uh, there's a book called M is for Metal, and it's an ABC book, but it invokes Ozzy Osbourne is the O, and uh, ACDC is the A. And it's really fun nice. and cute, and it has all these little limericks in there and, and rhyming pages it came out in 2006 so it has been out of print for a while unless it's come back but i've tried to find it and i can't but it goes for a lot when it's not available and then here's a not so gentle segue <laughs> <laughs> going from children's books the next one i want to talk about is a few audiobooks and at the top of that list again quick disclaimer I'm only mentioning audiobooks that are voiced by the actual artist because there are many audiobooks where they just phone it in and have uh, or farm it out. Rather, I keep saying that accidentally. They farm it out to some professional narrator who will read the books. And one such book is The Heroine Diaries, um, and that's by Nikki Six. And uh, he tells the story of you know his heroine days and rock and roll and the ugly side of it, but it's in his words. So if you're going to get yourself an audio book, and that's an easy digital a present for people, folks, if it gets to be Christmas Eve and you're screwed and even mm -hmm. Amazon Prime isn't going to make it to someone, getting an audio book and emailing it to people, there's your save. That's, so. that's actually a really good idea. You're welcome. 
<laughs> Thank you. Got to admit, I've done it myself. <laughs> um, but Nikki Six is great, um, and he's got a nice voice. The other one has um, a wonderful voice, and he just sounds like butter, British butter. Is Johnny Mars audiobook is it's great and they talk about like coming up in the like post-punk scene of london and it's his story of being with the smiths before during and beyond Mm -hmm. and his voice is lovely something that popped up on my uh, something i want also is somebody that we had on the show recently (laughs) Uh that uh, we haven't released that episode yet we released a youtube video with him but mark weiss he was fun, and, and I was looking through the digital copy of his book, uh, of his photo, his photography book, and it's just badass. Like, that's the kind of stuff that's just, like, cool. And I was just like, I would love to have this book, you know, minus the watermark that we were, you know, the digital version that we got to see. But um, that would be, like, if, if you're a fan of photography and you're a fan of music and, you know, especially that decade of, like, hair metal and big rock and all of that it's it's really cool and he he he, he's he's in that he's he's totally in that uh in that genre of like when we did the call with him he was like with a metal shirt and didn't he have like a bandana or something he did he's like full on like metal bandana he's he rocks the look for sure um I, i can't even guesstimate how many pictures that man's taken two million three million but the the, the collages right of his work had, i tried counting like how many pictures were in the collages that kind of break up the book mm-hmm. and there's there's no less than 50 or 60 in each collage in addition all the and just just when you think oh my gosh it must be nearing the end of his book it's just like oh my god you're only halfway through it right he's taken some amazing pictures and I really love the stories that were behind his pictures too. Oh, for sure. For Those sure. were great. Um, like the little things like Lita F- and all the quotes from people, Lita Ford saying, Mark said sex sells and this is what we got. Well, apparently it does. <laughs> she's a household name. That's true. That's true. So uh, yeah, he, he's great. And the, the fact that he ha- has so many more pictures that didn't make it into this book. Remember he was saying that right. Taylor, Taylor Swift hired him and, couple other pop stars were in there too but um yeah i imagine he has a ton he is actually the only photojournalism book that we have on our list you know here's a few other audio books though uh and i don't even have the titles here title uh, the authors here but i know who they're by um a, a dream about lightning bugs is a story by Ben Folds of Ben Folds 5. Fun fact, there's only three people in Ben Folds 5. A lot of people don't know that, um, which is surprising to me because they're like a famous trio. But people look at you funny when you say, yeah, the three guys in Ben Folds 5. Uh, and then uh, Bruce Dickinson has a nice book out. He's got a nice voice as well. He really does. It's called, uh, and he's, he's funny too. He's hilarious. And you can, as evidenced by the title of his book, which is called, What Does This Button Do? <laughs> oh, here's a very good one. This one reads like Goodfellas. Mm. It's called Hitmen, Power Brokers and Fast Money Inside the Music Business. If you are at least mildly interested in, mm, there's probably remnants of this now, but in the shenanigans, for lack of a better word, that the music industry used to use, like payola and all that, this book, like, uncovers the ugly side of the music industry in its history but all smart people would know that uh shenanigans that worked are probably just evolved and still being employed much That's like you know like uh you you can't get a job in radio anymore you back me up on this sure you can't get a job in radio without signing the thing that says i won't be a part of payola i won't oh, be a yeah. part of plugola right yep Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. You had to take like those, you know, the, it's like the equivalent of the uh, the sexual harassment course, but we have to it do is. that. We, we, we basically, that's in addition. And then I remember, um, was it two, what was it 2002 or two w- uh, with the Janet Jackson thing uh, at the Super Bowl? And then yeah. we started having to do that kind of stuff too. What? Uh, uh, I remember it, when I was working at CBS Radio. 
we had to like take a whole class and course about uh, what we were responsible for in FCC rules and all of that stuff after. Um, and we had to sign our life away saying that if we got in trouble for any FCC violations, we would be liable for it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember going, I was, you know, like, I'm, it, it's 2002, 2003, whatever year that was. Uh, and I'm new, I'm, you know, like, I'm this fresh intern turned producer sitting there signing yeah. away going, um, if I get a $200,000 uh, FCC fine, yeah. I'm, I'm responsible for paying for it. God, that's scary. You know, um, a couple of years ago when I was working at B98.5 in Atlanta, um, mm -hmm. they, I had to pee in a cup to get the job. <laughs> I never had to do that before. So when I left radio and started being a, a music correspondent on camera, that was that. And I thought, well, I'll go back to radio. Radio is easy. Radio is fun. Ooh, and right. yeah, I, knew I would have to sign the pay do not, you know, do payola. I knew I'd have to sign that. But what I didn't expect was to have to sign the thing that says anything, any invention I come up with while I work for you belongs to you. Oh, yes. Right? That one too. There's that one. A and, bunch of creative and, ideas that are owned by CBS Radio. And, and go pee in this cup. <laughs> and we reserve <laughs> the right to make you do that whenever we want. So, I mean, they've tightened things up, obviously, for a reason. But, uh, but anyway, so, yeah, that goes back to this book, Hitmen, Power, Brokers, and Fast Money Inside the Music Industry, um, which is uh, it, scary. It, remi it reminds me, have you ever read the book? Um, it's one of my favorite books in the world. It's actually always on my list. Of, I, was, I wrote it. I actually jotted it down on this list here just as, like, a, a quick a gift that I like to give people that are interested in radio and, like, stuff like that in the business mm -hmm. Um, uh, have you heard of the PD Chronicles by Jack James? Have you ever heard no, of this I have book? not. Tell us. It's called, it's called the PD Chronicles Blatant Confessions of a Radio Guy. And it's written by a guy named, uh, uh, he put a pen name called, he calls himself Jack James, but he claims that he's a major market PD that lived basically the life that you and I lived. Okay. Uh, that and has stories for days, and it's basically a memoir of story after story after story after short story of things that have happened to him, real life stories that have happened to him while he was a PD and while he, while he worked in radio. Wow! And it is so. If you're a radio geek and if you've lived the life, it's like you'll read this and go, "Oh my god, I, I know exactly. I have a story that matches this." You know, it's it's like one for one, one for one. And when I was uh, a morning show producer, I had a copy and I would always uh, give it to my, uh, let my um, interns borrow it so they could read it and go, um, is this the life that you want to go into? <laughs> Tell me the name of that book again. Oh, it was, uh, it's called The PD Chronicles Blatant Confessions of a Radio Guy by Jack James. Ah, oh, that sounds great. I've got to read that. I will put that on my must-have list. By the way, uh, we somebody said here have has have I read Kathy Valentine's book? Yes, Kathy's book is amazing. <laughs> you need to listen to our interview on text, prose, and rock and roll. She is lovely. She also made another brief appearance on our most recent pod, which is about the Go Go's. And uh, uh, so, thank you very, very much to uh, Robo Go Go for which is a kind of an inside. A joke if you watch the movie or whatever robo go go is basically what they did when they were on stage um kathy talks about it in her book too but she's a wonderful guest and i would put that out there also for anyone else looking to interview her but here are some classics um and that got kind of got me rolling in uh in this area of reading uh, band bios and such uh, i was sitting on a beach two years ago and I forgot my book. I was in Mexico and the hotel had like a library of displaced books that other tourists had forgotten. And many were in other languages, but one that was not was Jewel's book, Jewel Kilcher's book. Mm, yep. And it's called Never Broken Songs Are Only Half the Story. It came out maybe five years ago and it's pretty thick, uh, but it doesn't feel like it. It talks about, I knew she had been homeless mm -hmm. and I knew that she came from kind of a, a scrappy zero frills life in Alaska, 
but I didn't know how scrappy. And she tells these amazing stories about how she was growing up with these brothers, broken home, lived alone when she was a teenager out on her own, lived in a car by herself, which is the, the homeless part. She was in her car. And by the way, she was raised in a barn, literally. She was. <laughs> That's, it's a fact. You have to read the book. But she lived in a barn on her family's property in Alaska. That's how she grew up. They, she, she lived in a small house, I believe in Anchorage, I think, when she was a teenager by herself. And one of the stories she tells is that she didn't know how to do dishes. So she dug a hole in the backyard and she buried everything. <laughs> so if you've recently purchased property in the suburbs of Anchorage and you go dig in that uh, hot tub in the backyard, you might find Jules' uh, un unwashed dishes. Um, That's funny. I highly recommend her book. That one got me going. Uh, it's, it's a tearjerker, too. But it's also a story of triumph, and I, I would like to be her friend. And that's as stalkery as I get. But she's very relatable. That is the point there. Um, I would also say that Hammer of the Gods, which is a classic book, uh, it's about Led Zeppelin, if you didn't know. And it is unauthorized, and the band does not like this book, but... It is phenomenally popular, and they also concede that just about everything in there is true. I think they just maybe don't want their their ridiculous rock and roll days to be immortalized. That might be part of it, because there's mentions of in there of how they were interested in the occult and got into Aleister Crowley's stuff, how they tell the story of, like, shoving televisions out of windows. They tell the story of Robert Plant saying, I am a gold, I am a golden God <laughs> <laughs> on a balcony in front of a lot of people. Some other very embarrassing things as well. But Hammer of the Gods by Stephen Davis remains an absolute classic that you must know. As mentioned earlier, All I Ever Wanted by Kathy Valentine is one of the few books I'll mention that is on our interview list this year. Again, not to say that others weren't amazing. Jennifer Juniper was a fantastic book. It actually made me cry. That, of course, by the lovely Dr. Jenny Boyd. Um, but I got to say that Kathy's book is just a real standout, and it did make me cry because there's such highs, such lows, uh, such redemption, and so much. Like I don't want to say girl power because that's over overused but in her case she she really talked a lot about um just redemption and coming full circle and um she's she's really tight with all the go-go's which i really love they all grew and, up together they're sisters and 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 just blatant honesty <laughs> just she just like you said like what we said in our uh, in our um in our podcast episode where she just ripped the band-aid off and just was just like yep yeah, boom 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 all these things that i've done yeah <laughs> okay and i also have to mention another one that really stuck with me was up jump the devil by bruce conforth mm. and i think that had a lot to do with the fact i have so much respect for dr bruce conforth who is an ethnomusicologist and original curator for the rock and roll hall of fame i have become a huge fan of this guy had no idea who he was before we started this podcast he really opened my eyes on robert and going so far beyond that legend of the devil at the crossroads, uh, what what was your takeaway with him? Oh, my my thing, it, like I was just amazed. Like we came away, I came away from that interview, and I felt like I had just gone to school, you know, because <laughs> he was just his knowledge and his deep knowledge of music and and everything. It's like yeah. you just you just feel it. He's yeah. it's like, it was like you were going to. You're going to the church of school, uh, the church yeah. of music, you know? <laughs> you know, there's, there's something wrong with me because I, I've secretly come to like when I say something that is what I think common knowledge and then the person calls me on the carpet and says, well, actually, that's not correct and this is why. <laughs> I like that because it's dispelling what the common person would think. And, right. and I've, I've always prided myself on being... Like the typical viewer mm -hmm. or listener, 
Right. Um, and, and I hate it when people at my level call themselves an expert because you better be an ethnomusicologist who works at an Ivy League college, <laughs> right? If you're going to you say go. you're an expert, you better be. And, um, and I am not. So I do appreciate when people set the record straight like that. If you're into Rush, speaking of going deep, uh, it, the anthology that Martin Popoff has come up with is great. I don't want to talk too much about his anthology because we haven't done them all. So we'll save that for a later date. But Rush in the 70s is great if you were there. Rush in the 80s is coming up on a future pod with us. I hope you'll check that out. That, of course, would be Tom Sawyer and all of, uh, all of the, the huge stuff, the progressive stuff they did in the 80s. Um, there is an, another interesting book that was inspiration for this podcast, and that is called The Beautiful Ones. It's by Prince along with a, a co-writer. It was the authorized biography, autobiography of Prince that was in the works before he died. And again, I won't go too far into it because I'd like to talk about that at an upcoming pod. But uh, it's, it's a beautiful book that deserves some uh, mention. And uh, the estate really didn't have to have anything to do with it because it was really the last thing that Prince A okayed before his untimely mm. death a couple oh, of wow. years ago. In my in my research of stuff, um, I came across for music lovers. I you know like I was looking for gifts and all that, and there's a um, there's a website called Uncommon Goods, and it's basically all cool little neat like tchotchke knit knickknacks for like music lover stuff, like you know like. Uh, vinyl bookends for books and Sweet. and and stuff like that. And then the one thing that I thought was kind of cool, I probably don't need it because I probably don't need to save everything. But it was a um, I thought it it was a ticket stub diary, and okay. it was like a little book that you could stick your ticket stub in there and write something about the concert or what the concert was and who you went with and all of that kind of stuff and I thought it was kind of neat because I for the longest time I mean like I'm sure I do have it somewhere is a shoebox full of ticket stubs that I had been going to you know like new kids on the block when I was nine or you know something like that god I wish I saved those things I never saved any of those um, um ah. yeah I've, I've got a shoebox somewhere I'm positive of it uh and probably in a closet or in storage that's got a bunch of ticket stubs and stuff that I, uh, the, uh, of concerts. And when I see them, I just like, you know, it is just total nostalgia. And so when I saw this, when I saw this thing on Uncommon Goods, I was like, dude, this is really kind of cool. I would like, if I was 10 or 12 years old, I would totally start something like that. Yeah. I do. do they don't do tons of tickets though anymore. Everything's on your phone now. That's true. That's you know? true. <laughs> my a friend of mine just popped in she's dying her son just asked what a ticket stub was <laughs> i love it there you have it from the mouth of babe and that's it that's all we it. wrote <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic um thank you thank you so much charlene our producer of text pros and rock and roll thank for joining you, us today thank you so much for checking us out Charlene, I hope you enjoy your weekend and thank you, you for spending well. time with me. And um, Thanks for having um me. yeah, my pleasure. Let's do this again. Thanks everybody. It was fun. <laughs>